Hello, good morning, Sister Jim, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever your time zone will be. May God bless you. We from Malaysia here is good. Good afternoon. How are you doing today, Sister Jim? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are, and how are you all doing? We're doing good. Sister Jane, you are looking good today. <laughs> it's really to start teasing me. <laughs> All right. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Remember what happened yesterday as the program started? Uh, a lot was discussed about yesterday, and uh, it was so fun. It was fun. I had a lot of fun yesterday. I had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs as well. <laughs> Yeah, I actually did have had a lot of fun yesterday. I mean, the funny part, uh, the funniest part of it was the fact that the question was being asked and the blind did the blind. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny getting the response from people. Yes, no, yes, some, no, some, yes, yes, yes. Some said yeah. no, 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 confidence. <laughs> and yeah. some people like, if they need each other, and they will fall or they, something happened to them, but then it was hilarious seeing. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was a nice situation and scenario for everyone to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And I really hope that is what we will do, continue doing today. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Today, at least we're expecting much. We're going to have much more people that will be imparting in our life. And let's not forget that this is Christ leadership lifestyle. I mean, we are being taught or we are here today to know what, what Christ leadership is all about. And Jesus was the case study of yesterday, you know, as being the ultimate leader. So mm. it was a whole lot of information that we gathered yesterday and we learned yesterday. Yeah, and before we go into that, I hope, I hope that a lot more people will attend today. Uh, yesterday we had the max of 84 people. I hope we can get up to 100 or more than 100 today. Hopefully so. We are expecting more of that. I mean, more than the number we had yesterday, we are expecting more. Mm. By God's special grace. Uh, we, we had our, our Deputy Continental Overseer Daddy, Pastor Joseph Olade in the house, and we had uh, the PRA, the Continental Overseer, also in the house yesterday. Wow. I mean, you know, yesterday... yesterday you know some people <laughs> be thinking, are these people part of the youth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their presence <laughs> moon was so, you know, encouraging and was yeah. was very, very, very we so honored, in fact, to have them in our midst. Like they had to take out their time to be with us and be in our midst. And even Pastor Bio do the sad go for you. um, youth and yaya activities, right? God bless you. I say God bless you to all of you. God will continue to bless you. Thank you for your, your time, right? I mean, it was a huge blessing to us having our mm -hmm. fathers in the Lord yesterday, and also we are expecting them to also be with us today. Uh, you, you, can, you can't tell how happy I was, especially learning from Pastor BC. Huh? So, Brother Br Br what do you think about yesterday's teaching? What, what can you actually say from your own angle in summary? Oh. I mean, for, for those people that are not here with us to also have some points and drive through with us in today's teaching. So, what can you say about yesterday? Yesterday's uh, teaching was so loaded, was so loaded. First things first, he talked about how he started on this leadership journey since 1994, how he, how he was a leadership. Where you born 1994? <laughs> that was like literally, <laughs> literally four years after I was born. And I was like, wow, it was a wow moment for me. Right, it show you the caliber of people with sort of experience that they're bringing to the table here. And that's why I was so appreciative of that and this program. Yeah, so uh, he mentioned that the, the success, your success as a leader uh, is determined by the success of those you are leading. Well, that was mm -hmm. a punchline for me, right? So uh, it means that uh, you being a leader and having people not succeeding under you is a problem and it's a big challenge to your leadership mm -hmm. skills, right? Mm -hmm. That was a big, Point, puncher, puncher for me, right? How about you? Um, for me, um, I learned the leadership lifestyle of Jesus. Mm. I mean, Jesus was the case study of yesterday, you know. Yeah. And I learned that um, Jesus uh, was a good leader, 
and he led his people being the servant. It's just more like reverse the case. People look at leadership as being the top, but Jesus yeah. showed us like that leadership is a foundation of every building. And when the foundation is faulty, that means the building will be faulty. Mm. So that was the highlight of what I learned yesterday. Mm. And uh, like you said, that if you have a bad leader, then the, the followers won't get to the right destination. Yeah. But if you have a good leader, the followers will get to the right destination. And I believe that all of us, like you said yesterday also, that, um, that everybody's called to be a leader because you are called for something on earth. You can imagine. So some people be like, um, I'm just in church. Or I'm just in the community. I don't have to be a leader. So I don't really think it's all about me that this topic. And everyone is called to be a leader because you are called for a purpose and you are called to handle one thing or the other. So you're a leader of yourself. You're a leader of the place you find yourself. Whether you are holding a position or you're not holding a position, so far you are living on earth, you are called to be a leader. So yes, yes. when I heard that, I was like, wow. Another thing that struck a chord uh, for me was when Pastor BC mentioned leaders must make changes happen. Yes, Anything that's that right. does not bring about change should be changed. Change. Wow, that was good. Wow. <laughs> Which kind of change are we talking about? Are we talking about, <laughs> are we talking about the positive? <laughs> Please pardon me. Are we talking about the positive type of change or we are talking about the negative type ah, of change? <laughs> in this context, it's obviously the positive kind of change. Any exactly. leader that's something about positive change should be changed. Wow, that was a big What about the leaders that we promised you like positive change and at the end of the day, you don't get to see the changes? Do you call them leaders? <laughs> Well, for, for those kind of leaders, we have, to, we have to keep praying for them and hoping to expect the change uh, positively that we will require or we require. If not, we pray for a change in leadership. <laughs> I think following, that, that that... Line, following that punchline exactly. I mean, if a leader does not or cannot bring about change, he should be changed. I mean, this, this talk is relevant, not just for us in the church organization, but exactly. everywhere we find ourselves in, both in the secular and in the church, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, yeah, I think that that's why it's so important that we kind of pay attention to what Christ leadership lifestyle is a lifestyle. I like mean, we are called to do so. So I think that is why this whole topic is very important. Now, you can mm-hmm. imagine that when we have good leaders or when we see ourselves as good leaders in Christ um, uh, ordinance. I believe that we will have the right change or we will have the, the thought to impart the right change wherever mm. we find ourselves, even in our school, in our communities, in our workplaces, in the church. It doesn't have to be just in only in the Christian church. No, this is not just all about church. This is a lifestyle. This has to be yeah. part of yeah. you, your daily thing that you have to do wherever you find yourself. People mm. could tell or would be able to tell that this person is not just an ordinary person, but someone that God has then to be here with us because of the kind of thing you are imparting with them. That change is with speak out for you, you know? Yeah. And uh, um, Pastor Vizzi taught us yesterday that a good leader has to lead with integrity. Now, this is where it comes, you know? Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when and you... also hum- humility, humility. Acknowledging yeah. your weakness while drawing strength from God. That was mm. the, the huge one. Humility. Yeah, that was... humility. You also that talked about the... You also talked about the servant heart, which you just mentioned, and a leader must have a sense of loyalty, loyalty mm-hmm. in three levels, to the organization you are serving, to God Almighty, and to those who are under you. That was mm-hmm. a big one. Yes. So I, I think that, that's why uh, most of us, I th- I, I'm so glad having this, this topic, you know, that I, I feel that um, most youth, because we are the future of tomorrow, I yes. think that's, that is why it's very, very important um, to us that we will pay a good attention. I mean, if you don't have your right material, you should get one, get a paper, get a pen, <laughs> so you can jot out some important um, points that will also attach to your life, not just jotting it out, but also making it part of you, you know? And when he spoke, you could see the joy in his heart when he was speaking about his leadership um, history, him serving God. You could hear him saying that, um, I served God for so many years, the joy, in is it that feeling of um I serve God, not just serve God, I was able to serve mankind, I was able to impart whatever gifts God have um imparted in me or God has given to me to share with people around me. So yeah. it's a privilege to be a leader. Yes. And and like you said, um, he thought about um leadership and being humility, being humble, 
when you are serving that leadership is not all about um, you being on top you know some people feel that <laughs> when you're a leader that you're the one in charge i'm the boss yeah, you know? yeah, so they yeah. want to always give command ah, mm -hmm. i'm your leader so you have to do this you have to pay attention you know exactly. that's not what leadership right. is all yeah. about I mean, we can spend time going into what we talked about yesterday and talking about yesterday, but sadly, we have to take note of our time. And uh, we can see a lot of people are beginning to sign up for today's program. A lot of people are beginning to sign up for today's program. Uh, there are people from Bangladesh. People from Bangladesh, please, can you wave your hands with the emoji? Wave your hands with the emoji. Come on, come on, people from Bangladesh. There are a lot from Bangladesh. I can see Sister. Sister uh, Ayobami, Adishina, God bless you. Are uh, 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 more people joining from Bangladesh? Please share the link, share the link, share the link, share the link, share the link. Share the link, share the link. We can see there are other people uh, here mostly from Malaysia. God bless you, my Malaysian counterparts. God bless you. God bless all of you. You who are representing, God bless you. God bless you. And please let's try to ensure to use a format of writing our names so that uh, we will know where you are from and where you are joining from is the country, the country where you're joining from, underscore your name, the country where you're joining from, underscore your name. Now we have 31 people in attendance, Sister J. I hope we can have more than 100 today. <laughs> uh, hopefully, yeah, your country, help us to know where you're coming from. I mean, like Raguna said, your country underscore and your name. So yesterday, yeah, we had a whole lot of people from different countries and, and we had a total number of 84 people. I mean, that's amazing. Can you imagine this word of God being imparted into 84 lives? So mm. that's a good thing. So we're expecting more of that. We're expecting more of the people. So if you know you have not invited your friend, please, I think this is a good opportunity because we've not started yet. Go and invite them, you know? Specifically, I think we are expecting more people from Pakistan, India, Tajikistan, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Myanmar, Nepal, Kazakhstan, Cambodia. I mean, I mean, we're expecting people from these places, even Hong I Kong. I not South Korea. I mean, some people that love South Korea movies. Yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> South so you don't Korea, have to miss South Korea. <laughs> yes, yes, South Korea, South Korea. Please, yeah, from there, give a thumbs up, give a thumbs up. Please write the name of the country where you are from, underscore your name, so that we'll be able to identify you. We are also expecting people to join from Vietnam, Singapore, Macau, Philippines, and lots more, and lots more. Yes. So while we wait for what we have in stock, I mean, today we are having four amazing speakers that will be imparting our life. Do yeah. you know that? Do you yeah. guys know that we are going to be having like a talk show from four amazing personalities that God have ordained for this program, especially for you and me. I mean, it's for me. So yeah, who are these people? Who are those people we're expecting? Who are these amazing people we're expecting for goodness? Yeah. So we are expecting our our own and very own Pastor Leke, all the way from Nigeria. To the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Leke Adeboye. <laughs> It's one of our guest speakers today. And you know what? What I'm excited most about today is today's session is different. To be like, mm. each of them will have time to discuss on their own specific, uh, mm. it's like Pastor Leke, for example, will talk about uh, how difficult it is to manage people effectively. Managing people is difficult, you know? So mm -hmm. how effectively as a leader will be discussed, yes. And we also be having the um, pastor Sunday Olujimi, who will also be teaching us in another section or another dimension of leadership. I mean, is that not amazing? To yeah, have that, that, that is amazing. Leader. That is amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. That's what we're going to expect. We are we are expecting Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris, who will be taking us traits of transformational leadership. I mean, we saw a glimpse from yesterday. Traits, mm. traits of transformational leadership. And then our very own sister Rubini Kalatasa. Sister Rubini, yes. our very <laughs> one of the speakers for yesterday's program. She'll be, yes. taking on, she'll be taking us on the challenges that we face in leadership. A leadership. lot, a lot. We have a lot to learn to do. Have a lot to learn. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, we also have to know those challenges 
um, that leaders face. You know, everything I have advantage also have disadvantage. Yeah. So all of this thing, we we are excited to hear about them. I mean, we are prepared. We are prepared our mind. We are prepared our hearts to receive this words in order for us to grow in leadership. So, like I said earlier, that when we have good leaders, then we would definitely have good community, we have good environment. You can imagine God raising soldiers, you know, yeah. not just <laughs> not just ordinary people, but raising soldiers because leaders are soldiers. We are to serve. And that is what we called on earth to do. So imagine God training his own people yeah. and uh, setting them in the different dimension to lead is definitely going to be great. You know, it's going to, it's going to be like a good product, a good art, art core, you say, yeah. Yes, yeah. So we want to use this time, uh, everyone, to kickstart this program. And the first item for today will be the opening prayer. The opening prayer will be led by our very own brother Cletus. Brother Cletus, God bless you. Um, about we're about to, as we pass the stage to you, uh, God we guide you. Please take over the stage for the opening prayer. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, my great and loving coordinators. So let us start immediately by rendering praise to the Lord. Let us begin to thank God, knowing that we've been praying and through his mercy, he has allowed us to enjoy life. Just look back yesterday what happened. I want you to lift up your voice to heaven and begin to bless the name of the Lord. The psalmist say in Psalm 92 verse 1, he say it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. It is of a great cause. Let us go ahead and begin to appreciate the Lord. Begin to worship him. Call him by his name. His name is Jesus. The name, the name of Jesus is higher and greater than all the name. It is not an ordinary name. It's the name of God of power and of praise. Let's go ahead and begin to worship him. Thank him for what he did yesterday. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for the salvation of our soul. Let us thank him for the one he sent to minister to us yesterday. Let us begin to give God praise. Let us appreciate him for what he's about to do right now in our midst. Go ahead and give the Lord praise. Father, we want to thank you. The King of glory, we exalt you. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are everlasting. You are eternal. There is no other God as great and mighty as you are. Father, we worship your holy name. Man. Be thou exalted. For in Jesus' master's name, we pray. Yesterday, we learned one of the characteristics of a leader, like our brother was just sharing, is humility, where it symbolizes a man acknowledging his weaknesses while he draws strength from the Lord. This is the topology of mercy. If you look at Psalm 86, verse 5, the word of God says, the law is kind, is compassionate, full of mercy, forgiving to all that call upon him. I want us to cry to God this very hour and say, Father, be merciful to us. As individual, as Yahya Isha, let's begin to cry for the Lord's mercy. Because void of mercy, every result of opportunity will only lead to the place of lamentation and increased disappointment. Let us begin to cry for his mercy. Let us ask God to be merciful to us. In any way we have sinned, whatever will be a hindrance to his impartation upon our life today, that God in his mercy will deliver us from those things. Begin to cry to the Lord. Father, be merciful to us today. As a church, be merciful to us today. As individuals, be merciful to us today. Father, forgive us of our wrongdoings, O God. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. Lord, be merciful to us. Begin to cry for mercy. Father, we ask for mercy. We acknowledge that we are weak without your strength. Your word makes it clear to us. In our weaknesses, your strength is revealed. Father, to your mercy, come and reveal your possibilities to us today. In the name of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Blessed Savior, we worship you. For in Jesus' much this name, we pray. Lastly, we are going to pray. When I was going through the scripture in Genesis 28, verse 16, Jacob said something regrettably. He said, the presence of the Lord was here, but I missed out of it. My prayer for each and every one of us, 
that we will not miss out of God's presence today in the name of Jesus. And that's why you and myself are going to pray to the Lord. We are going to pray a prayer. You're going to say, Father, today, grant me an encounter that will grant me a unique experience. Let's go ahead and begin to pray. One of the characteristics we learn again, we're giving a case study of David. David was able to conquer or confront his challenge because he has courage. And courage comes from an encounter. It is an encounter that brings out conviction. And that's why you are praying to God today that you are not coming here to live the way you came. You are going to pray. You are going to say, Father, please grant me an encounter. The word of God in Isaiah 9 verse 8, and the word sets forth a word to Jacob and a light of Israel. Pray that today you will receive your own word of transformation. You will see, receive your own word of illumination. You will receive your own word of wisdom. Begin to pray. Father, grant me an encounter today. In the name of Jesus, I do not want to come and live the way I came. I speak of time to proclaim your goodness. Father, let my life be impacted. Begin to pray. Whatever be the distraction that the power of the Holy Ghost that is right in our midst, to consume them in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Do not allow me. Do not allow me. Do not allow me, Jesus, to go empty and the one more time. Do not allow me. Do not allow me, Lord. Do not allow me, Jesus, to go empty and dead. Almighty, immortal Father, your voice say, where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are. And because you are here tonight, we come against every forces of darkness, every hindrance to your move today in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit all our speakers into your heart, all the panelists, oh God. Lord, come and breathe upon them that they will speak your word of revelation, your word of illumination, your word that brings down knowledge, that conquer every form of darkness in the name of Jesus. We cover the entire service, the entire program with the precious blood of Jesus. And in one accord, we declare the decree. This service open the name of the Father and of the Son and of the blessed Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' master's name we pray. And let Yahya Asia shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Hallelujah. Man. Thank you so much, um, Brother Cletus. Thank you for that amazing session for leading us into the presence of God. We really appreciate it. I will pray for more grace upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Yeah. So next we are having still in the presence of God. We're going to be having time for praise and worship. And let us not remember that he that worship must worship in his whole heart and spirit and words with his soul and with his mind. So don't forget to worship together with in God with your heart. So it's time for our praise and worship. Time for our praise and worship, please. Okay, while we wash, while we wait for the time for worship, um, um, don't forget that on the on the chat box we'll be having um, attendance. Um, I mean the link for attendance or whatever link that's required for the day offering and all of that. And uh, make sure that you also go down to your chat to see what updates you have. And during the time for um, the time for the talk show or time for for us to learn for the teaching. Let's not forget that we also have opportunity for us to ask our question through that means. And um, if you're not able to ask your question, you can also reach out through the email. So if, if there is anything that you're concerned, reach out to us through the chat box. So it's time for worship and time for our prayers. I will wait for the technical issue to be solved by the media. 
the praise and worship will actually be taken from our brothers and sisters from Philippines. All right, so while we wait, while we wait, God bless you all. Please rename your country and your underscore name as a format so that we will identify from where you are attending this program. Country underscore and your name format. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Whoa. Are good then your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good then your mercy endure forever. For people from every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good, thanks. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we you for who you are we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are you are good yes you are yes you are yes you are so good so good Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good all the time. It's all the time. You are good. You are good all the time. You are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. You are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. People from every, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah.
Fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, any is defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. And God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout. 
Shout it out, shout it out. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. Oh, I will live, I will not die. I will declare and lift you high, Christ revealed, and I am healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May God bless our wonderful team from the Philippines for that wonderful praise session. Uh, session. I was blessed by it. So uh, please remember to rename your names with the name of the country, underscore your name. And up next will be our interactive session with our special guests today. Please stay tuned and get out your writing parts ready. So for the introduction of our guest speakers, for the introduction of our guest speakers, we'll call on Pastor Biodu Stephen Oluwalabu from South Korea, the South Go to uh, for Yaya Matas. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Please take over the stage. Thank you, sir. Pastor Biodu. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, God bless you. Um, I think um, Pastor James has the has all this with him, so he, he will do the introduction. So uh, back to Pastor James. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor James. Please take charge. God bless you, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the part of the world that you are in. I'm so delighted to be part of here. And again, Pastor Stephen is straining the button of me. Okay, thank you so much for the privilege, sir. I want to use this opportunity to uh, bless the name of the Lord in our lives, individually and collectively as a team. And for all our daddies and mommies that are in the house here today, and also most especially for our guests, our guest speakers who are here, who have left some other important um, activities to be here with us. We are not taking this for granted. We pray that the Lord will reward you abundantly in Jesus' name. Without further ado, this is the time that we have been waiting for. If you were here yesterday, in fact, you still have to watch the video again to be able to learn and learn and learn again. So today we have in our midst four amazing individuals. One of them, our sister Rubini, is part of us here in Asia, Yaya. But we have Pastor Lekia Deboe, who is presently somewhere in America. I don't know which part of America he is right now. We have Pastor Sunday Olegimi in our midst, and we have Pastor Chris Ifolaja. So uh, in no particular order, um, I think we can spotlight them now. We'd request the four of you to kindly switch on your videos so we can see you and we can bring you live here. First and foremost, I would like to read out the, the biography very, very briefly of these great men and women of God. So first, Pastor Sunday Olujimi. Just give me one moment, please. 
You're welcome, sir, Pastor Lege. Co-host, please kindly help me spotlight them as they join. As soon as you see the video is on, kindly spotlight them. Thank you. All right, so we'll begin with Pastor Sunday Olujimi. Pastor Sunday Olujimi is a full-time pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And, and he has served in various mission fields before transfer to Malaysia in 2010. He's currently the pastor in charge of province, Malaysia One, and the coordinator of the Redeemed Christian Bible College, Malaysia. He has a deliverance and prophetic ministry with strong passion and leadership. He has organized multiple trainings in Malaysia, which also includes spiritual development training, ministerial effectiveness training. He is married and blessed with three wonderful children. The next person is Pastor Lekia Deboe, whom we call Lima. If you know, you know. <laughs> he is a senior assistant to General Vasia and the last biological child of Daddy Gio. He's a leader a coach, a mentor to many of us youths globally and heads of businesses. And he has some businesses. He is the worldwide coordinator of Pastor Seed Family PSF, a fellowship of the seeds as children of pastors and ministers in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. He is the lead pastor of RCCJ, The Bridge, located in Lagos. He is happily married and blessed with children. Third person is our sister, sister Rubini Kalaitasan. She is a Malaysian and based in Malaysia with over 12 years of banking experience in international local banks. She's currently serving as an international, in an international Islamic bank in Kuala Lumpur. She has a degree in finance and currently doing her master's in business administration. A student of advanced diploma in Christian leadership studies at RCBC. She is the head of media in, in Covenant House here in Malaysia and also a believer's class teacher. She's passionate about spreading the gospel, especially within the local community. The last person, and not the least, is Pastor Chris Ifonlaja. He is based in Northern Ireland. He serves as a senior pastor in place of victory for all nations. He is the national coordinator of School of Disciples United Kingdom and Special Assistant to Continental Overseer Europe on Family Affairs. Pastor Chris is an IT consultant with over 20 years of 20 years industry experience of working with multinational companies in Europe, United States of America, and Africa. He and his wife, Pastor Angela, Pastor Angela are host of a particular relationship chat show called Out of the Box, aired live online, drawing guests and audiences across the UK, Europe, US, and Africa. They are happily married with children. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it gives me great honor and privilege to, in to introduce to you these four great men and women of God. So we're going to start the session with Pastor Lakey. They have been allotted with some subtopics and you have 10 minutes to talk about this, after which we'll go into uh, the interactive session. Over to you, sir. Wow, well, that was quick. <laughs> okay, good evening, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on, of course, where you're coming from or where you're at today. Um, thank you for this honor. I uh, do not take it for granted. I'm just trying to set my timer because apparently I only have 10 minutes. So that's 10 minutes on the clock. Okay, today um, I'm in Texas in, in USA. Uh, we just came back in the suit. We just came back from a light up crusade in downtown Dallas. If you check my status or Pastor Yadibu's status, you'll see some of the pictures in real time. But well, thank you for this honor. I'll just go straight ahead on the topic I'll be given is um, dealing with difficult people, dealing with difficult people. I'm going to come at this from a Bible angle. So Ephesians chapter three, verse 17, 
Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 says, May Christ, through your faith, amplified version, may Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his presence home in your heart. May you be rooted deeply in love and founded securely on love. So I would like to shock you today by saying that there actually are no difficult people. You just haven't understood that person yet. That is my immediate shocker. All right. Um, there are no difficult people. You just haven't understood that person yet. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 2 says, whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick tempered displays folly, which means with the one that is quickly to react and get angry is actually the one that is being foolish. All right, so don't be too quick to react to difficult people, quote unquote, difficult people, um, but rather try to understand there is always more to that person that you do not see. There is always a lot more to that person that you do not see. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. Um, it says this, it says, so we fix our eyes, not on what is sin, but what is unseen. Sins, sin, since we, uh, what is unseen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I'll, I'll read that again. Second Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18 says, so we fix our eyes, not on what is sin, but on what is unseen. Since what is sin is temporary, but what is unseen is internal. So you might be meeting someone that comes across as difficult, but they're dealing with baggages that you don't even know exist. There's some baggages that even aircrafts will not allow on as excess luggage, okay? Um, there's always a foundation that makes this individual difficult. There's always a back end that you don't see, that you, you don't know why, and that is why they're being difficult. So um, this is what you should do. All right, personal story. Uh, my father sent me to a military school and in that military school, we have this very um, difficult teacher. Uh, when she wants to beat anyone, she would make you stretch, for your, stretch your neck forward and she would always beat you just at the back of your neck. Extreme, pure wickedness. So I figured out like, you know, what's wrong with this lady? Then um, I understood that she's of age, but no one would marry her. Or, or well, what most guys would do is come and just come and juice her and milk her in every way possible. You know, we might have underage people on here, so let me be careful. Um, and then they will leave her, but never really propose or marry her. But, you know, once we realized that was a problem and she has refused to change, uh, <laughs> we got into prayer mode. And then she beat the son or daughter of, uh, of a really powerful man. And that was the end of her in that school. We didn't try to show her love. You know, we kept receiving the canes and all of that one. But anyway, um, <laughs> that did not work out well. Difficult people can be dealt with in love, all right? There is neither Jew nor gentle, neither slave nor free, nor neither male or female, for we are all one in Christ, for we are all one in Christ. So that's Galatians chapter three, verse 28. Galatians chapter three, verse 28. Difficult people can be dealt with by getting to the foundation and helping fix it. Getting to the foundation and helping fix it. Psalms 11 verse 3 says that if, there's, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, the righteous can bring down the foundation, move it from being on sand and move it to a solid rock. All right. So the foundation can actually do something. So I know this uh, politician in Nigeria that is um, always moody and always upset with people. Uh, maybe because we have a personal relationship. But then what was the problem is simple. All the children of, of the individuals she worked with, everything was going fine with them, but nothing was going right with her own family. So she was transferring that anger towards everyone else that she met around. So the solution was simple. It is to be able to get the children connected with God, like the other people around. That was where she, she could actually start seeing a resolve to our problems. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 11, since I'm running on time, first Corinthians chapter three, verse 11, uh, ESV version says, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid on Christ. 
So in order to fix any faulty foundation, you need to move it from wherever you laid it and lay it on Christ. Let him be the one that you're anchored on. How can I deal with difficult people? I'm sure you asked, you know. So finally, you have to actually look inwards. You need to deal with yourself first. Yeah, you are the first point of contact. If something is wrong with you, then it's easy to find fault in others. Every time you point a finger, there's at least three pointing back at you. Yeah. So you need to look at yourself first. Luke chapter 6, verse 42 says, how can you say to your brother, Luke chapter 6, verse 42, how can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the splinter that is in your own eye when you yourself do not see the beam. Hypocrites, the Bible says, first take the beam of wood out of your eyes and then you will see clear. Uh, oh, wow. Sorry about that. I think my camera jumped out or someone cut me off. Anyway, um, let me continue. I hope that doesn't count against my time. All right. No, so not at all, sir. Okay. <laughs> Why I love this uh, Bible text, it's very simple. Why I love this Luke chapter 6, verse 42 um is very very simple for someone to be called difficult then you then you have to be in the same space with that individual so i want you to consider this yeah a speck according to luke chapter 6 verse 42 a speck and a beam are both inside the carpenter's shop so you that you have a beam in your eye and then pointing into someone else's speck that means you are both in the same space which means Everyone is work in progress. A beam is a work in progress. A speck is also a work in uh, progress. A splinter, sorry, is also a work in progress. Everyone is, a, is, is going through something. Um, and everyone is coming from something. For those who, who get that. So it's very simple, actually. Uh, for you to be able to deal with difficult people, you need to deal with yourself first. See why they might be difficult towards you. If you fix yourself and you stand in love, going back to the first text at the beginning, and you do everything in love in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, and you ensure that where you stand, you're standing from a space of love, then mm, you will not even see that they're a difficult person. You can use love to overwhelm them, to turn them around. Every time they're angry towards you, I, I mean, I posted a, a, thing, a thing recently. I said, smile, it confuses people. Even the person that is angry, I actually randomly just drive by and just smile at people or wave at them. I don't know them, but I just do that and then just to watch their reaction. Um, because the nation in which I live in, people are just, you know, they say defense mechanism is to look angry just so that someone won't mess with you. But if you smile, you break that uh, look down slowly um, by showing love. You could break that difficult person down and let them actually tell you why they're trying to be difficult. I remember coming into America a few years back and this custom immigration officer was so angry and it was just being mean nonstop. Um, I met him again about uh, four or five days ago and he had to explain that um, he thanked me for not being too ash towards him because then his wife was battling uh, a, a terminal disease. That's why he was being mean towards everybody, but now it's cool and we're all cool. Prayer point, got 30 seconds left. It's simple. Father, help me. Fill me with love. Let me see in love. Let me see myself how you see me. Let me see others how you see them. Help me fix my own foundations before I get on to helping others. And Lord, please don't let me be the difficult one. Don't let me be the difficult one. In Jesus' precious mighty name. Amen. One second left. That's it. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful, wonderful teaching. Thank you so much. We are privileged to learn from you. Please, in case we have any question, do not hesitate to write it on the chat box or you can send it to us through email if you're not able to answer your question. And um, next we'll be listening to the next speaker. Over to you, Pastor James, to introduce to us the next speaker. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Pastor Lekia Deboye, for that. I'm sure there are questions coming, sir. So we might still be uh, posing those questions to you, sir. If you're privileged to be here, because uh, we understand that you would be leaving soon. So you have very limited time with us. And that was the plan to ensure that we get the best out of you within this shortest possible time. But if you're still with us, then fine. We'll just uh, send in the question maybe after the next speakers. So uh, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, please. Okay, we have a question, sir. Maybe we should take that question first because we are not sure if you're going to escape. <laughs> so uh, let's take this one. Is it our responsibility to fix difficult people? <laughs> okay. Um, in your journey of life, it's actually, it is actually part of your responsibility as a child of God. All right. We're all one. Um, God did not create anyone to watch them go to waste. Uh, and since you have knowledge, since you have an understanding, since you come to the knowledge of Christ, you know that that soul is more important to him than anyone else. If the person is proving difficult, your assignment is not to fix them. It is just to show them love and to connect with them. It is God's assignment to fix them. I mean, if he would leave 99 to go after one, just the same way he went after you, you can help. Paul makes it clear that it's one person's assignment to plant, another person's assignment to water. It is God's assignment to ensure that there is a, there is an harvest that would also then be someone else's assignment to actually pull that harvest uh, out of the ground, to plant a seed that would help them and find out why they're being difficult. If then your space, even if you shift them to someone else, that would also still end up being a problem for you eventually. So just show love and, and show what you have, what you have received um, from God. And then, you know, let it go from there. Uh, the, the, the closer they are to you in your circles, the more love you would have to show. Because if you have to be dealing with them every single day, then yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. For, for that, while uh, Pastor Sunday Oligium is getting ready, because I understand that he has a, a slide presentation, uh, I just would like to ask Pastor Leke, uh, in management, as a leader, you get to a point where someone has refused to improve, has refused to adhere to all the protocols and all the SOPs that you can think of, and you've made a venue for every um, easy channel for the person to absorb and make use of these SOPs. And you've done all the uh, performance, imp performance improvement plan, like PIP, coaching and everything. So from a Christian point of view, is it okay to manage that person out? Because from the management style, from the, from the official management style, I mean, in an organizational yeah. management, management style, you, you are supposed to actually manage the person out and get the next uh, competent person in as soon as you can. So from a Christian, Christian point of view, is it appropriate to manage people out completely? Okay. Um, <laughs> you're trying to get rid of the person. So one of the things that I, I would say is this, you, you need to have a checklist. What do I mean by checklist? You need to find out uh, by having a conversation with an individual, what is the issue that is not allowing them to improve? Is it that they're not well equipped for that position or they just can't handle that role or they have no knowledge um, of what it is that you're trying to get them to, to do? Once you go through all the boxes and you tick all the boxes and this individual themselves are, are refused to, um, to change or to be able to step up um, in, the, in the physical sense, you could actually play the spiritual card, um, which is after having done all, yeah, uh, <laughs> and you stood, you can actually ask or pray this prayer point. Every plant, my father did not plant or put it uh, from me. You can always pray that prayer. So rather than you manage, you can manage them out in the place of prayer, but physically, because in some cases, People that you remove without learning, uh, without them having an understanding of why they're being removed, they would always have uh, hatred towards you and then hold it against you permanently. 
Thank you, sir. Manage them out in the place of prayer. Thank you so much, sir, for that. There is another question, but it's actually the same as the one I asked. So the question is for Pastor Leke, sir, please, after showing all the love and done all you can, is it possible to part ways with the person if he or she refuses to improve in their own character? So I think that's exactly what we just... But when, when, you, when you say showing all the love, um, you have to go to the whole extent of the whole love. You know, um, befriending the person that no one else would befriend. Um, following up this individual, going to their home, checking up on them if they will let you get personal. Find out how they are as a, as a person. And then it is from there. Sometimes you might discover the reason why they are currently being handicapped or cannot perform. Um, because you just don't want to, you don't know what is going on in the back end. You just don't want to throw anyone away. Thank you very much, Pastor Leke. This time around, we'll let you go. <laughs> but definitely we'll be having you back, sir. Okay, okay. And thank God for I'll technology. We can have you anywhere you are now, so you don't have to come to Malaysia again <laughs> before we can have you all Asia. Thank you for the thank pleasure you. and the honor. Thank you. I'll hang around and then see if I, if, uh, if you allow me to run away. It's just 2 a.m. yet. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, all right. Sir. Okay. Um, that was Pastor Leke. Ladies and gentlemen, please, you can give some um, arousing reactions in the chat. You can give some clap. You can give some tada. You can give some heart. And I appreciate this love. While we bring on Pastor Sunday Olujime, we would want you, sir, to please turn on your video. Okay, that is here. Daddy, welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, Daddy. Uh, so the floor is all yours. Ladies and gentlemen, Daddy, Pastor Sonia Lijimi will be talking about the perfect leadership values. The perfect leadership values. Over to you, sir. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout bigger, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank the almighty God for this great opportunity to be part of this great thing God is doing in uh, Asia Youth and Young Adults Forum. I want to thank the almighty God for my fathers in the Lord, our daddy, the CEO Continental Overseer, and uh, daddy, Deputy Continental Overseer, and the panelists and the entire youth in the whole Asia continent. May the Almighty God be with you and contribute to increase his knowledge in your life in Jesus' name. So by the special grace of God, I have just 10 minutes as well, but I just want to just brief and go over the whole message. I would like to read from the book of uh, Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 28. Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 28. I'll be reading from New Living Translation, and uh, that one says, But Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authorities over those under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be, serve, must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So by the special grace of God, under the theme, Christ leadership, Christ leadership lifestyle, I've been given the title, the perfect leadership values, the perfect leadership value. Let me start my introduction by you know, giving a short story of what happened to me some years ago when I have my master's program here in Malaysia. I was desperate for a particular visa there. So I have to look for a job and then uh, one of the university college. And I got the opportunity to see the CEO of the university, an Indian man. And he said, he have one question to answer. And uh, at the interview, and he said, he asked me, now we have African in this very particular school. My question is that having the African like you in this place, what values do you have to add to this school 
and to maintain and control the African in the land. By the special grace of God, I, I was able to speak and to answer the question. In fact, the man at the end of the day, on that 15 minutes, he said, guys, you have gotten the job. You just give yourself an office because we, do, we don't really have anything for you. But with the way you have spoken, uh, I, I have an idea. And the man said, we made you an Africa client executive officers. So you'll be in charge and they get ready to start and everything. So by the special grace of God, the way the man answered me, I realized that the values I was able to give, according to him, he was pleased. Because everyone is expected to add value even to his life and to the people around. So by the special grace of God, people of God, I am here to talk on the fact that it is very good. What are the leadership values we are now talking about? Because of the time that I have with the time limit, let me start with the definition number five. Values are the stable, long-lasting belief about what is important to a person. So you as a leader in your unit, in your department, what is that long-lasting belief, your belief system that is so important to you that you know that if you are to lead these people, definitely you are going to lead them right. And no matter what happened or the changes that happen around the places, there will not be a change because anything you call value must have a last long game value in which it will remain no matter the change that comes based on dispensation and error. So this very particular value will now become the standard by which people order their lives, you order your lives, you order the people under you, and they can make choice through the values in which they believe, you know? A belief, and it becomes a belief system, and a belief will now develop into value. This is my belief system, I believe in this, I believe in that. And it end up becoming a value upon which you get yourself committed, and grows then to be so important to your life and to your organization. Therefore, a person adopted principle, you know, a personal adopted principle, standard, and a belief system, stable, which you stand on, that will never change, is what we call value. So these values we are talking about, it has many roles. The roles of values in leadership can never be under, underrated. And that's the reason why I'm going to charge the people about the leadership as we are talking to the younger and youth heart that Christ Jesus also, you know, he laid down values for us. Even right from the Bible, while he was leading his, you know, his disciples. So he declared those values ready. So following the example of Christ's leadership style, there are great values that we need to adopt into our leadership, into our leadership style, both in the secular and in the church since church is the perfect example of any organization. So based on these values, we help us to shape our culture, the way people behave in our organization, in our working place, in our, in our, in our workplace, and even within our church, the culture is, the, you know, is simply defined as the way people believe in a particular community. How do we believe? If we have a very strong value that is lasting and is very, very good, you can see people having a beautiful culture and this very value shaping our culture, we also determine our organization behavioral patterns. The way people will begin to behave in the organization, this will be, will be well defined. So briefly, let's just go through some of these values that we are talking about. There are some essential leadership values that Christ Jesus taught us. And anywhere, either in the circular, in the world, in the church, in any organization, these values remain. Number one of it I'm going to mention is love. Jesus Christ taught us and demonstrated love among us. When he had his disciples, he, ta he taught them on how to love, to demonstrate love. Love is the fruit of the spirit. So it is expected to manifest within us. And then according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. So love, you know, just love, you will satisfy every other law because the Bible says that law, love is the fulfillment of law. Romans chapter 10, chapter 13, verse 8 and verse 10. Romans 13, verse 8 and verse 10. So love is the greatest commandment in an organization or leader, in an organization or settings of, uh, of community where there is love. Nothing changes. 
because love will be the basis upon which that very particular leadership base on. And you can, you can be sure that there's going to be a lasting period for such kind of organization. Quickly, I go to second values that I want everybody to meet to be the, you know, stable, long, long lasting value. If you are humble as a leader and you make this very particular humility to be, to be the, 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 the basic standard, your belief system in the organization, even in the church, we can be very sure that there will be there will be things going on where the way is supposed to go. So pride is the opposite of humility. And we discover that many leaders are failing today, and many are still failing, many have failed in the past, and many are still failing just because of pride. You know, some believe that they need some little dose of arrogancy to be an effective leader. Or some even still believe that they, they, they need to measure some arrogance before you can rise in, in, in leadership. No, it's not like that. You know, when we see in the first Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, so we need to be you know, to be lifted up and being puffed up is called hubris. Hubris means excessive pride of self-confidence. When you have self-confidence, excessive self-confidence, you, you, you become so arrogant. This one, it kills because the Bible even says in Proverbs that pride went before the fall. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for as many leaders, the spirit of pride that will cause you to fall, it will never be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So another thing that I essential leadership value that I will call the perfect leadership value that we need here is empathy. Empathy is another one. An ability, you know, to understand others. See from other people's opinion how they are feeling. You know, you, you know how they are feeling. It is a value that we need in our in our organization at any point in time. You know that this is this will cause your 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 community of leadership to be very strong. The Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Knowing that I have not much time now, we go to another perfect. You know, leadership value, which is essential leadership values. Another one is honesty and transparency. We are expected to be honest. Christ Jesus taught us honesty, and he taught us to be transparent. And uh, when he, gave, he gives you know, us gifts, you know, he expected us to work with it. When he put us in the place of leadership, we are expected to be honest, you know, following the instruction given from the leadership at the top. Then another essential leadership values I'm going to talk about here is vision. You know, you must be a visionary leader. As a, a very good leader who has a leadership value, vision must not be taken out of the way. You know, a leader must be able to show the future of that very particular organization. The ability to, to, to bring out the picture of a preferable future for the organization and for the people in that organization, then you know how to take them there. In the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verses 14 to 15, Genesis 49, verses 14 and 15, the Bible was talking about Issachar. That Issachar, you know, he, the Bible said because he saw the he saw the future, that there's a rest in future. The Bible says that he bowed down his two shoulders and he became a servant to tribute. You know, when you know that you have a very beautiful, preferable future, you wouldn't mind what you are passing through now. That vision will be power that will be driving you. So every leader supposed to be a great leader that needed to be driven and motivated, you know, by what an organization can accomplish in the future or what it can become. So that, that vision has to be there. And as a leader, we should be able to lead our people and to teach them on how to achieve that. Uh, seeing that my time has gone, let me just end up with this one, communication. So we should be able to communicate the vision, communicate the job description of everyone in different departments in our church, communicate with them over and over again. Somebody said that, you know, repetition is the essence of teaching. So the essence of teaching is the repetition. Repeat and communicate the vision. Tell them what they need to do, time without number. May the almighty God help us as we continue on this. There are still many values so that we still need to talk about. But because of this very short time, I would like to end here. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
Um, thank you so much, Daddy. That was an amazing one. Thank you for um, teaching us on the perfect leadership value. At least we also learned in this part um, what it means to have leadership value. Like you say, it's not about being the boss, but it's not about serving the people and leading the people into the vision. Like you explained, um, every leader has to have a vision. Vision is seeing the future. So you can't lead, the bank cannot lead the blind because they will fall, like you said yesterday. So thank you so much, Daddy, for letting us know what it is about leadership value. So over to you, um, Pastor James. Uh, thank you, Daddy, uh, for that wonderful session. Uh, we have a question in the chat, but uh, I believe that is still with us. So yeah. in order to give room Amen. for more questions to come from uh, the subject that Daddy just dealt with, so we would allow more questions to flow in. So we will not uh, disrupt that uh, progression. So we'll just go straight to Pastor Chris, if all like, uh, then we can be able to uh, consolidate all of these questions and we will be able to also tag them according to the preacher and the topic that has been sent. You're welcome, Pastor Chris. If all like, uh, this is the first time we're having you here and it's a great, great pleasure. Fabulous, thank you so much. Um, thank you, okay. sirs. Thank you, ma'am. And I want to um, acknowledge all our leaders on the platform, Pastor Remy Akin today, I believe, Pastor um, Ola Dave, the Deputy Continental Overseer, and Pastor Sh uh, Stephen Oluwa Labu, the Sad Goyaya, and, and all our fathers and mothers on the platform um, just wanted to acknowledge you and say thank you for giving us the space um, to learn. May God bless you and may God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm glad to be on this platform. Thank you for the invitation. And because of the time, I'm just going to zoom straight into my presentation this morning. Yesterday was amazing. I had a blast um, learning from uh, the pastor yesterday and also from the pastors that have spoken this morning. I've learned a lot. Thank you so much for schooling us this morning. Now, my topic is called the traits of a transformational leader the traits of a transformational leader. And of course, um, you will have heard leadership defined in various ways. I'm gonna to just touch on two and I'll go into um, transformational leadership. And so a le leadership um, is the process of social influence, which maximizes the efforts of others towards an ach the achievement of a goal. We know that, that leadership can be defined as an influential uh, power relationship. Yeah, in which the power of the leader promotes the movement in others. Yeah, leadership is the use of influence capital to effect a change for the benefit of the others. I just want to throw those um, uh, uh, definitions out there. Um, but I want to say that everyone can lead and everyone ought to lead. Everyone can lead and everyone ought to lead. We can learn how to lead and change uh, for the better is the responsibility of all and not the responsibility of a class of people. Can I repeat that? We can learn how to lead and we ought to lead because change for the better is the responsibility of all and not the responsibility of a class of people. Yeah, every Christian is a leader. We have this greatest leader, the spirit of Jesus inside of us. And so everyone is a leader. We have the capacity and the capability to lead. Now, let me go straight into transformational leadership. What's the difference between a leader and a transformational leader? Now, a transformational leader is a leader in addition to effecting change for the change for the benefit um, and, and for everyone, a transformational leader is interested not just in people, but structure of the organization. A transformational leader is not only interested in people, but he's also interested in the structures in place within an organization for the continuity and the sustainability of leadership, even after that particular leader has exist, exist, um, um, exit the stage. So a transformational leader is interested in structure. And so we're going to look at the um, at Jesus Christ, the archetype of of a transformational leader. I'm going to touch up on Nehemiah as well, because Nehemiah is also a very wonderful example of a transformational leader. So for the traits, number one, the traits that are very important in transformational leadership is structure, 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 and structure, structure, division of labor. So transformational leaders, they look at an organization because they understand that um, leadership or change 
is a continuous thing. It's continuous. It's an ongoing process. Change is not just going to happen in four years or eight years. We have to leave structures in place to allow leadership, um, uh, to allow change to continue. You see, and so uh, uh, transformational leaders. They are always also interested in structure. So let's look at Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Mark chapter 3, verse 14, Mark chapter 3, verse 14, the Bible says Jesus Christ called 12 people and he appointed them as apostles and they were to be with him and also he would send them out to preach. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, I read it quickly. He said, now these are the gifts Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostle, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the organization, the community of believers. So transformational leaders are interested in structures. Jesus Christ made sure that in the church, that we have some gifting and, and off, offices in the church. So the apostles, he breaks the ground. The prophet comes and edifies the church. The evangelist goes out. He's the salesman in the organization. He goes out and get people saved. And the pastor, the teachers, they build the people up. And so though that's the structure in the church to make sure that there's division of labor because this work of change must continue. And that's why over 2,000 years after Jesus Christ has left the scene, the church is still going strong. Uh, Jesus Christ left the scene over 2,000 years ago, but because of the structure and the gift that he released on, on people, um, uh, the church is still going strong. Number two, role modeling. Role modeling, it is the, role modeling is the intentionality um, of the leader to also build other leaders. And not every leader is interested in building other people. So um, a transformational leader is into role modeling. An ancient word for role modeling is called discipleship. Discipleship is about followership, you see? And so discipleship is the intentional follow, following of someone or the teaching the lifestyle of someone so that you can become the exact copy of that person. And that's what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ called people to follow him. Paul also said, follow me as I follow Christ. So discipleship is a um, uh, uh, transformation of leaders is, about, is also interested in role modeling, role modeling. So what happens is that the leader intentionally, intentionally exhibits some traits that the people watching him find um, 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 adorable. And so they decide to follow him because they're endeared to him because of the ideals, the, the traits they see in him. And so I'm just gonna touch on five and you've heard it. Humility is one of them. Service is another one, compassion. Jesus is always moved by compassion. Jesus is a servant leader, he's humble. Personal attention to people. One time, uh, the mother of Peter was sick. He, he left everything and went to the house of the mother of Peter because he gave Peter, his follower, uh, a, a personal attention. Number five, selflessness. Yeah, selflessness. Now, let me go into vision. Number three, the character trait of a transformational leader. Uh, that leader must be huge into vision. Like, like the previous speaker said, he said that you must be able to see the end in sight, yeah, and be able to communicate it. So vision and vision casting. Not only do you see it, but you must be able to share it in a compelling way that those who are listening to you say, yes, let's go, let's go. What is vision? Vision is the vivid imagination of what should be and what could be. Vision is your preferred future. Vision is the ability to imagine a better tomorrow harmed with well-articulated plans to get you to your destination. The vision is the ability to see what is currently not your reality, but you possess the audacity to believe that it can become my reality. That's what vision is, the ability to see what is not now, what you cannot see, but you can see it and you have the audacity to believe that it can become my reality. Vision is the ability to plan the future with imagination and wisdom. The vision can be likened to a dream, but dreams without plans um, that, that, you, that will help you to actualize it is no vision. It's no vision. That is daydreaming. 
Nehemiah, Nehemiah spent months making strategic plans about building the wall in Jerusalem. How do I know that he spent months? Because by the time he came before the king, he had all the plan mapped out. Let me read that quickly. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. The Bible says, the king with the queen sitting beside them asks, how long will you be gone? When will you return? Uh, Nehemiah said, after I told them how long I will be gone, the king agreed to my request. I also said to the king, if it pleases the king, let me have letters addressed to the governors of the province west of, of Ephraim's river, um, instructing them to let me travel safely through the territories on my way to Judah. And please give me a letter addressed to Ashfa, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber. I will need it to make beans for the gates of the temple forest, for the city walls and the house for myself. And the king granted my, my request. You see, he envisioned it. He knew how long he was going to be away for. He knew how much it will cost. And he made his demand. So when we have vision, you must also have a strategic plan. You must cost the thing out so that you know what you're doing. Vision is so crucial. So not only do you have a vision, but you must be able to cast a vision so compelling, so broad that it will elevate the interest in people and generate awareness and acceptance of your mission. Hallelujah. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 2, again, I told you, Nehemiah is an archetype of transformational leader. In Nehemiah chapter 2, as I begin to round up, Nehemiah chapter 2 from verse 17 to 18, um, Nehemiah said, but now I said to them, you see, Nehemiah is sharing vision now. He says, now I said to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies in waste. The gates thereof are born with fire. Come, let us build the gates, the walls of Jerusalem, that we, we be no more a reproach. A new living translation says, um, come, let us build this thing so that we will end this disgrace. Verse 18, then I told them, the NLT, I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been upon me and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, yes, let's rebuild this world. So, that, so they began the good work. That is vision and vision casting. You envision it, you strategically plan it, and you, you share it, you cast it. The number four thing I'm going to say, and that's the last one about uh, traits of a transformational leader, is strategic thinking and intellectual stimulation. Strategic thinking, I've talked about that a little bit, and um, intellectual stimulation. Let me just say it this way. You must be able to empower those who are following you to solve pro problems independently of you. So whenever, whenever there's a problem, so what you do, you think aloud with your leaders. You think aloud with your leaders. You think aloud so that they learn how you're doing this thing, you see? Because sometimes you, see, you find some leader, they want to be the champion. And so what they do is they, they just tell you the answer. No, because you are interested in building leaders, because you know that leadership change is continuous, you must brace people up. So you think aloud with them. You strategize with them. You don't just come to the table with the answer. No, no, you know what the answer is. So oftentimes you hear Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus Christ knew what he would do, but he will ask the, the, his followers, what do you think? You have heard it said about divorce. What do you think? Because Jesus is stimulating intellectual, uh, uh, critical thinking, strategic thinking, and he's stimulating them intellectually so that they can also know how to solve problems i can go on a number you've given me 10 minutes and i think i'm done but let me just let me just slide this in let's just say this last thing there are some leaders ladies and gentlemen who um, get into leadership because they want to feather their nest that's no leadership yeah leadership is an ongoing thing you must have structures in place to make sure that after you've gone this thing is still continuing. Not that you're making a name for yourself so that people will say, oh, I remember when Pastor Sos, no, oh, there is no leader. No, no, you don't want that. You want to be, uh, not only do you do well, but you also want to raise leader. You want to be kingmaker. Amen. God bless you. Over to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I hope that didn't much. feel too rushed. <laughs> Amen. Thank Amen. you very much, Pastor Chris. You're that's, welcome. A, welcome. that's a whole power pack do that session on traits of a transformation, a transformational leader. God bless you. Thank you very much for that wonderful session. So, in order not to waste our time uh, further, uh, Pastor James, please take over. Wow, wow. Thank you so much for that explosive moment. 
Pastor Chris, we celebrate you, sir. Without wasting more, more of our time, please send in the questions in the chat. We are collating the questions on Facebook and here on Zoom. Please send in your questions. I would uh, read it out after the last speaker. So that would be Sister Rubini. Sister Rubini is ready for us. Over to you, Sister Rubini. And she'll be talking about challenges we youth face in leadership. Thank you so much, uh, Brother James, for the awesome job that you all are doing. It's such a great pleasure to be in this platform with highly anointed um, men of God. We started yesterday with Pastor Bizia Kande. It was truly a powerful session with him. And thank you so much, Pastor Leke Adeboe, for accepting our offer. It's, it's such a great pleasure to have you here, sir. And uh, Daddy Pastor Sunday Olujumi, indeed, sir, you, you have been always a leader to all of us, example leader. Thank you so much for participating, sir. And also, Pastor Chris um, Ifonlaya, thank you, Pastor Chris, for also being with us it was such a great uh blessing for all of us and uh, i'm representing this beautiful family this beautiful energetic dynamic family of uh, asia yaya and the topic that was given to me will be challenges to youth face in leadership so we are going to look at why are the youths are uh, this nowadays youth are scared to become leaders what is actually drawing us back for when this topic was first given to me i tried to place myself in this uh, question um, I try to place myself in this question to discover what is actually drawing us back. So just like what uh, Pastor Leke Adeboe said, I was taught to, before we point out one finger to the society, to, to the people around us, let us see how many fingers are actually pointing towards us. Four fingers are pointing towards us. One is towards them, towards the camera. Four is towards me. So we are going to look today, what is wrong within us first before we look outside? Number one, I've got eight points altogether. So my timer is up. Uh, I've set my timer. So one point uh, will take like one minute, I guess. Okay, quickly, point number one is that the challenge that the youth are facing is that we youth, we are thinking that it is not now. We are so used to with the phrase of youth are leaders of tomorrow. When I was in high school, the motivational speakers that come to my school, they are so, they love this topic. Youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Youth are the leaders of tomorrow. It's a very popular topic up to now, right? <clears throat> Therefore, that particular topic is already stored in our, in our mind. We are, we, are, we are like, okay, we are the leaders of tomorrow. We don't realize that that tomorrow is actually now. We don't, we, we are still thinking, the youth are still thinking, okay, we still have time. We still have time. We, we, are, we are procrastinating. We are delaying the pro progress because we are thinking that it is not time yet. We should be ready to take the baton from the previous generation now and not wait till tomorrow. Thank God for the RCCG Asia Convention team last year. I don't know how many hours was, uh, uh, was there last year, but the team that we had was the future is now. We said the future is now. Let no, let no, no longer think that it's tomorrow because that tomorrow is actually now already. There is, so we are, we are on the right direction now. The RCCG uh, organization, the, uh, the organization that we are at is growing. It is following in the right direction. So number one will be we are thinking it is not now as a youth as a growing youth if we want to become a leader we should not think it is not it is not now we should think it is now already it's not tomorrow okay point number two will be fears we have this fear of unpreparedness you have this fear which comes in the form of questions we, we tend to think like what if how to do it why is it me so for, for example, now, when, when, when a job is being offered to somebody, when a job is being offered to a sister in a church, for example, she's being offered to become a head of Asha. So she might have, for, for example, now I'm being offered this head of uh, Asha. So I, I'll have this fear, what if, what if I'm, I'm late, right? So there's a reason why, when, well, there's a reason why the pastor is actually offering you that job. Correct, because maybe he wants you to come. He saw the potential in you, number one. And then maybe he wants you to come early as well. Same goes to if a brother is being offered to become the HOD of choir, perhaps um, managing, 
uh, sisters in choirs is, is a huge task. I, I know that. So perhaps there is a reason why the job is being offered to you. He's molding you to manage your wife in the future. So please do not be fearful. Uh, do not be fearful of not taking any job being offered to you. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven, says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. So with power, why do you need to fear? Why are you fearful? Right. So number point, num point number two says that fear of unpreparedness. Um, and number three, imposter syndrome or feeling of iniquity. It is a feeling that you are not competent as others perceive you to be. So you think that um, you are not good enough. We think that we are not good enough. The youth nowadays think that we are not good enough. Well, I believe leaders are not born like uh, we are not born uh since birth right leadership qualities are built as we grow the dna of leadership might be in us in a person but we have to explore and grow from there for example now let's take for example a ceo's son or a daughter um, not all CEO son or, or daughter, they are managing their father's company or they are manager in a particular company. Some, they, they, they don't even want to take charge of their parents' business. They, some, um, some, some, they don't even know what to do because they are just spoiled bread. Therefore, even though the DNA of, uh, of course, a CEO, he might have that leadership quality in him. That's why he's a CEO. So with, with that leadership skill, if you're, if you're thinking that the, the, the skills, the, the DNA is the one, the leadership quality is born within us. That is not true. So do not feel that we are not um, good enough. As we grow, that is where we learn. Do not be afraid to take up any job. Do not think that I'm not good enough in anything. That is point number three. And also, let us look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. What it says, what the Bible says, for we are God's masterpiece. When we know we are God's masterpiece, why are we thinking that we are not good enough? Right? We... We have to admit that we don't grow. We don't grow immediately. We grow as as the time teaches. From childhood, leadership characters are built from childhood. Since young, as you are the eldest, for example, now the eldest of a family, you you are the eldest. You train your younger ones, and then when you go to high school, you become the class monitor, and then when you go to uh, secondary school, you are given a, a, a maybe a president of a particular club. That's how we grow. So do not think that I'm not good enough in this job, please, dear youth. As you are listening to me, take down. Do not be. Do not lower yourself. Next point number four will be lack of knowledge. As a youth, we are growing. Growing. So this means we don't have experience because we are growing, right? We, as we grow, we, we get our experience. We don't have that much of experience. However, acquiring the skills and knowledge, we might be able to become a successful leader. How? For example, now, if we are good at a particular, uh, in, in your office or, or whatever uh, job that you are, you're good at that, and you want to develop more, you want to develop more on that, you have to, you have to get, uh, besides your education, your edu our education, it will not stop after high school or after university. It, it will go on as we study, right? As we, as we, as we age, we learn every day is, each and every day is a day for us to learn, right? So let us not uh, limit ourselves. Get all those skills that we, you need to go. Go for the seminars, get all the certificates done, sit for the exams, develop yourselves. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 19 says, wisdom makes one wise person more powerful than 10 rulers in a city. One person is enough. Let me share with you one experience. As I'm pursuing my master's right now, it is all online. I, I the classes are online, the exams are online, uh, the assignments are online, and I'm going to shock you with something. I one of my um, co uh, co uh, how do I say oh, co mate? Yeah, he is 83 year old uh, man, and he's doing his master's at the age of 83. He's doing his master's. There are, there are some moments that um, during uh, one of the subjects, strategic management, where we required to draw graph using the uh, PowerPoint and the, our word, right? So he told the lecturer, doctor, I'm so sorry, I won't be able to draw using the word or PowerPoint because I'm not good at it. And the lecturer said, it's okay, Mr. Edward, no problem. You can just draw using the pen and uh, the ruler. You can even set 
sent it to us in KL. He's from Sarawak, those who know, he's from Sarawak. So they, the lecturer was even, because we were so amazed, 83 year old man. So ask ourselves, what is limiting us for, from not developing, from not going further, from not making our, upgrading ourselves in terms of knowledge. Next, point number five. We are very comfortable. Point number five is being very comfortable. I realize many of us youth, we are very comfortable at where we are now, right? And that is now uh, the drive for to climb the ladder of success is fading eventually. For example, okay, uh, let me just give you an example. Where I work at the bank that I work at, I have seniors who have been there for a good 10 to 12 years. Same position, same salary, and they are very happy about it. You know why? Because they think that... Um, Sorry. They think that if they if they need to go to another company, they need to build a repo. They need to learn more. I think my time is up right now. Sorry, uh, just two more minutes and I'm going to round it off. Um, so this is what they think that um, there's this, they think that they, they have to do a lot of, it's a hassle for them. So they are very comfortable about it. Let's not be comfortable. If you think that you have got better opportunity outside, seek outside, do not be comfortable at where you are. So now we are going to look at this one finger that is pointing at the society. Quickly, the society prefers experience more than knowledge. Unfortunately, hiring managers, those who are um, those who are hiring, those who are ahead of a senior manager, they prefer experience. They prefer experience than um, knowledge. For example, now um, uh, our coworker. For example, like let, let let me take for an example. If I'm working in a bank for like five years and I've got masters, but my co-worker is like for 10 years and he's got a diploma or degree, they will look for those with five, 10 years experience, even though my master is major in what am I doing, right? So please, uh, that is one challenge that we face. Recruiters and managers, they prefer those with experience. Okay, the, another example that I need to emphasize here, without the knowledge of IT and social media, during the lockdown, we wouldn't have run the church, right? we wouldn't because we, we we cannot go out everything is locked police is everywhere the church is even locked so how are we going to worship how are we going to worship the almighty god it is only through the knowledge of it and social media we did that and my last okay i've got two more points sorry the the seventh point will be communication very important we are so glued to our phones now we don't even know how to talk to people. We don't know. We don't even know how to communicate correctly with right people. Replying. Some people they just prefer to message and say no. Some people they just prefer to um, see the word no. It depends how we read it. Some people read it no like that. Some people read it no. So the the intonation. How we say it is very important, body language. Therefore, communication is important. We are so afraid. We are running away from roles of leadership because we don't know how to communicate to people. We don't know how to handle situation where it comes. And lastly, leadership stress. We know all jobs comes with leadership, uh, with stress. No job is stress-free. Sorry, sir. Sorry, I know I've, I've exited the time. No job comes uh, without stress handling uh, people, their complaints, managing workers in church, conflict. So please, this, this is one of the reason why uh, the one of the challenge that we run away from is because of the stress. So I believe that is all. There are many challenges, but I've picked some from here today. Um, and one, one last question before I end, we have to ask ourselves. Tell me which you cannot overcome, which of these challenges that you cannot overcome when you have the Holy Spirit inside you. So this is a question that we need to reflect on ourselves. It's time for us to reflect. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Brother James. Sorry for taking up my time. Tell me which challenge out of all of this that we cannot overcome. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens Amen. us. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us. Thank you for that wonderful session, Sister Rubini. And as you were speaking, I was just wondering, is this the same Sister Rubini that is part of us? Or this is another... Sister Rubini, thank yeah, you very I much for that. <laughs> Thanks for that wonderful moment. So right now we have some questions in the chat box. We have questions for Pastor Sunday Olujimi and Pastor Chris Ifolajet. So uh, co-host, please help me spotlight them while I read the questions. Uh, first, I'll go with the first question for Pastor Olujimi, which is how can one help to define an advanced 
an organization's values when you are not in charge. So you're not the leader now, and how can you help define and advance these organizational values? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can hear you. Sorry, please. Can you just come? Come again with the question, please. All right, sir. The question is Sorry. how can one help define and advance an organization's value when you are not in charge? Okay. So not, yeah. I, I get it. So by the special grace of God, you as a subordinate in an organization, and you see that some values are actually lack in the organization. You also should first of all build your own values. And the value of humility is really needed in you. There's a way in which you, you should be able to pass across an idea, even to your superior, with all humility, if you can do that. By the special grace of God, I have done that before. You have to be diplomatic, wise, ask for the wisdom of God, because it's not the kind of things you, you stand up and begin to talk anyhow. Somebody was speaking of recent, that uh, he was being punished by a senior pastor because he made the, he made the suggestion. The question is that how did you pass the suggestion across? How did you go about it? If you know something is lacking in an organization and maybe the superior at the top do not know, now your approach is very matter. With all humility, and you go through the channel in a place where they put protocols and structures, you need to, you need to come through the right kind of people that you know that you can channel the your advice and you don't come up to say okay this thing is lack I want to I want, I want to put in for you no no leader will take that one from you so it depends the way you pass it across very very important so let me just chip in and just like that let me stop there because values will never end but you too must carry your value before you can pass across value to an organization. Exactly. Thank you. Th thank you so much, Daddy. So the, the way and manner you convey uh, the information or suggestion or still matters. So one more question for you, sir. Pastor Chris also has two questions, I believe. Uh, so the, the question is, hello, sir, based on vision, how can a leader know all that need all that is needed to see the vision to a completion from the beginning? because every vision have processes, different stages and different levels of obstacles that comes along with it. So how can, uh, how can a leader know all that is needed to see the vision from, from the beginning to the completion? Because every vision has the processes, different stages, different levels of obstacles that comes along with it. All right. So in a very simple way, vision is just like you knowing where you are going even before you start the journey, right? Now, if you really want to get there, there should be mission. You work out the processes on which you are going to get, and which you are going to get to the place where you are going. So you are just like, uh, you are just like a football uh, group of teams, you know, they are at the pitch to play football. And uh, you can imagine if two teams are playing and there's no goalposts. So where do you want to where do you want to throw the ball to begin to count the scores? So how would the two teams be playing without the goalpost? So there must be a goalpost. So this one will help you. Since you know the place where you are going, every other thing that you need will be coming along. That's number one. And uh, the issue of vision, vision grows and expands as time, you know, within times. As you are, um, you know, getting to a particular stage of your vision. You, you, you will need that there are other things that will be needed. So while you are pursuing it to one stage, you, you from that stage, you know the next place to go. So there must be a place where you know you are going and get ready. You start from somewhere. You know where you are going. It doesn't matter what you face in between within the journey, because there will be challenges, of course. Once it is a real vision, there will be challenges, but you should be ready you know, to pay the price. You know, to, to you know, for every vision you have and you want to accomplish in life. 
So I don't know, maybe thank that's one of answered the question. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, uh, yes, Daddy, sir. yes. I don't know if, if Pastor Leke is still uh, awake because like he said earlier on, it's actually midnight and he's taking some rest before the start the day activities again over there in America. But if he's here, there could be some questions for him as well. So for Pastor Chris, uh, oh, there you go. So- Yeah, I'm here, sir. So, sorry, sir, we are not just aligned, but we'll soon be done very okay. shortly. So uh, we have a question for you, but for now, Pastor Chris, would, this one is for you. A leader should empower his followers that yeah. they can be problem solvers. That's right. No, sorry, that's not for you. How do you groom your followers to be strategic thinkers? So that's for Pastor Chris. Okay. How do you groom your follow followers to be strategic thinkers? In All right. one minute, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, what is strategy? Strategy is um, um, a, a logical step in achieving a particular aim. So when we talk about strategic thinking, another word that I would like to use to describe that is joint up thinking. So the question is, what is the vision of the organization? And so every time we're doing something or we have a project or we're trying to do an event or program, you got to be asking your people and asking yourself and asking the people you're working with, how is this thing that we're doing going to help us to achieve our desired goal? So you got to ask yourself, so you're a church, okay, we're doing an event. How does this um, contribute to the, to, 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 where is the evangelical part of this? You know, are we just doing it for doing sake um, or are we doing it, you know, how does he achieve what we're trying to do? So you've got to make sure your, your, what you're doing is, is joined up, you know, so, so because you're trying to achieve a particular aim. And so strategic thinking is asking yourself, okay, this is where we're going, right? This is how we're going to get there. So when you're doing stuff, you got to keep asking your followers, your people, your team, what we're doing, how is it going to help us to get here? Otherwise, you're doing stuff, but you're not actually achieving um, what you set out to do in the first place. So that, that is one way that you just keep asking questions and um, getting them thinking and um, make sure you're asking the right question because asking the right question will help you to get the right response. All, that All right, asking the right questions. Yes, sir. That that's exactly the point there. But another question for you, sir, is what are okay. some strategies that can help to be an effective leader in all areas of our lives, ministry, career, family, okay. etc. What's that simple strategy in very- oh, well, well, uh, well, you know, you know, it's about Christ-centered leadership. So, so Jesus Christ, you know, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So you're gonna be following Christ um, because if you're following Christ and you're becoming like Christ, you're a disciple, you are a regimented follower of Jesus Christ, then those traits will see it in you and people will also imbibe them. So I think having Christ as, as the person to follow um, is, is a way that you can, you can ensure um, that you're becoming the right person and the people following you are also becoming the right person. So let me leave it at that because of our time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this is for... Pastor Leke, they are appointed into leadership. One needs to be recommended by someone else. How can one show that you are ready for more responsibilities without blowing your own whistle, especially when you're far from the center of decision-making and activities in your organization? Wait, say, say, say that question again, please. I, I didn't get it. To I was reading another one that you posted. Sorry. Yes. So I'll just drop that in the chat immediately and I'll read from there. So it says, to be appointed into leadership, one needs to be recommended by someone else. How can one show that you are ready for more responsibility without blowing your own whistle, especially when you're far from the center of decision-making and activities of the organization? Okay. <laughs> I think um, what the person uh, most- yeah. Because yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it comes from different angles, though. If you are trying to, um, that means if you're serving, you're, you're trying to serve um, so that they will see you. That's eye service. But if you're genuinely serving quietly um, um, for the purpose of actually serving, then trust me, the, the, the punishment for those who are useful is that they get more work. Um, and there will always, always be more. 
But then in terms of having someone in this position of leadership that you're following under, if you actually serve them with this technique that I use, if you have ideas, you run it by them. So they push it as their idea. When they get promoted for such wonderful ideas, they pull you up. The people that are use, useful are never left behind. Um, just like the church pulpit that you guys will take up to an event that you're doing outside of churches because it's useful. That's why you take it along. Um, that's one of the things I've seen. So it, it depends. If your intention is actually to serve genuinely, you would automatically be promoted. Um, so I'm using myself as an example. Uh, God only gave me one idea, which is this pastor said family um, movement that we have. But since that time, and I have... I don't know, like four or five caps that, I'm, that I have to wear. Um, so I'm coordinator for Pastor Seed Family, I'm assistant pastor in charge of province, CSR for Youth Province 1 in Lagos. I'm also the principal executive assistant to the general overseer of RCCG. I'm also the director of special duties for NYAY, which is um, uh, RCCG Young, Young Adults and Youth Affairs. I'm also head of protocol for, um, God, I'm, I'm done. I don't even know sometimes. So yeah, that's, that's the punishment for, for actually being useful. But every idea you get, uh, it's always been submitted to the leader and uh, the leader would, uh, would come up and look good. You will be promoted. Yeah. Hey, can, I just, can I just drop this in quickly, guys? Um, no, well, PLA, bless you. Um, just wanted to say that I think that if you continue to serve, God will announce you. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, the last verse, Jesus Christ said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. At the right time, God will announce you. You don't have to go make a name because God will give you a name. He gives, you know, so just serve, um, be genuine and, and all of that, and God will announce you at the right time. And if they all of that. Thank you. So, well, this is the most interesting part of this to the program, this Q&A session. So the questions are pouring in now and some are specific, some are just for all the speakers. So this one says for all the speakers, but I would appreciate if we can just take two speakers, maybe one minute each and says, as a leader, you have seen very people, various, various people. Okay, as a leader, you have seen people, various people. Okay, what is a distinct characteristic, characteristics of a person? that should have, that will motivate you to want to work with them and build it. So the person is just asking, what is that distinct characteristics that you see in person that you would be motivated to want to work with them? Honesty is one, sorry to just jump in. Honesty and genuineness um, for, what we, for, for whatever we do. That's, those are some key traits that I, I look out for. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what the other uh, panelists would like to say, but yeah. Honesty and genuineness. Okay, okay, can I come in? Yes, sir. Yeah. Just exactly like Pastor Leke just said. He's just describing the, the, type, the topic you gave me for this message, for this very particular program. And it's just the perfect leadership values. So what do you take as a value in life? You know, if you are the type who love people who are very humble, if a proud man is the one leading, you won't, you won't go for that fellow. You understand what I mean? So you are not being motivated because he doesn't have what you take as a very high esteem value. You know, you need somebody that's okay. Maybe I, I, like I talked about empathy. Somebody do, do not have any human feeling. It doesn't matter what or what happens to you. His job is the first. Even if your wife is dying at home, if you or children are sick at home and you are coming late and you are telling them this is what is happening, he cannot put his leg into your shoe to know. You know, we are talking about a leadership values in which what do you value in life? What do you hold to be more important to you yourself? That one, we, 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 we help you to make the best decision in life. What do you value in leadership traits? What do you carry yourself? What do you, what do you base your leadership style upon? If you have the opportunity, how will you be able to rule your own very particular leader, you know, lead, you know your subordinates? 
That's what will be the basis on which you are going to make a decision on how to choose the kind of leader you go for. I don't know, maybe you have you maybe have yes. made a yes, point. Sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. So what do you value? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what do you value? You don't you, there's no love in the organization, and I believe in love. I, I, I like coming to such a thing. You have not motivated me because you lack the value that I appreciated most. You know, something like that. Yeah. Just please let me just come in with a question the Pastor Nicky answered the other time and pass off if I like that. To just cite an example of somebody who is savvy. Look at the, the way God located David out of the backside of desert. It was only somebody in the book of, uh, you know, first king that was even describing that I, I saw one boy out of the sons of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. You know, who knows how to play this, 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 and this. Somebody introduced David before David can appear before King Saul. In fact, the, 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 the funniest part of it is that the name of the person who introduced even David was not even mentioned. He, the, the guy just said, I know one of the sons of Jason the Bethlehemite, who knows how to play. He can help the king out. And from there, they, 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 they look for, for David. But David was faithfully serving, taking care of the sheep and the good of the father in the desert. He was located. So, like all other panelists have spoken, if you are faithful, you are honest, and you are committed to the work that has been given to you. When your time comes, promotion will locate you. I believe so. Exactly. You, promotion you. will locate you. Yes. Mm. Your results will definitely tell you. Yes, sir. So, I'm sorry, our time, our time is up, but we have two uh, questions. Moderators, please shut the door. No more questions again right now. We're running it all. After this one, we're going to take our offering and we're going to take our Father's blessing from our CEO and then we're going to uh, call it a day for now. So this question goes to uh, Pastor Leke. And Andrew is asking, when and how do you know that the love you are showing is being taken for granted? At times, people misinterpret our in intentional act of love for weakness. So how do we identify this abuse and how can we address it? I, I think I want my sister, um, uh, Rob, Robini, Robini, Robini. To, yeah, to let, me let me contribute to this. How do you survive working in a bank and you know you have to deal with different people all day, every day? I mean, some people might even try and steal your lunch that you put in the office, uh, office fridge and stuff like that. So how do you, please tell me, show me. Yes, thank you so much, Pastor. So um, like our fingers here, it's all not the same. So, so are the people that we meet in our daily lives. They are not all of the same character. They are not of the, all, all of the same attitude. So as, as a banker now, uh, how am I dealing? with people, with various kind of background, with various kind of attitude, with very kind of financial situation. So as we, as we meet them, as we speak with them, as we explore their life, that is when we will know. We cannot judge a book by its cover. I cannot be looking at one person and saying, this is how it, he is going to be. This is how he will be. I cannot judge that. So let us not judge uh, a person by the appearance. But as you talk to them, as, you, as we communicate with them, that is when we will know. That is, uh, that is what I, I think, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So it is, it is normal for human beings to push the envelope um, by you showing love. Uh, I mean, people will take advantage of your love the same way we take advantage of the blood of Jesus. Um, I mean, thank God he has a surplus, but I mean, amount of times he's forgiven us, we keep using it and washing and showering with it over and over and over again. Um, thank God that he's been abundant in it. But then, of course, um, you, you can only give as much as you have. Um, the Bible tells us that uh, to whom much is given, um, much is expected. It didn't say all is expected. So uh, you can then judge with, by percentages of what that much is. Uh, so if you are showing love, it, of course, there will be a part of it that will be taken advantage of. <laughs> For those who are married, they understand this kind of uh, situation that... Uh, 
yes, you would be taken for granted in some parts of your life, but dealing with individuals just like the same way Christ is, is coping with your own excesses, you have to remember that you're meant to be Christ-like. If they slap you on one cheek, you're meant to turn the other. But the Bible did not say what you should do. If they should slap the other cheek, you can flee from all appearances of evil. Um, or you might turn to the Peter's side and pull out a sword. But I'm not suggesting that. Please don't. You are not living in Nigeria. Please don't follow that uh, that angle. Okay. But um, but if the, if the love you're showing is being taken advantage of, you have to then or uh, um, you can you can use wisdom to mention it or use wisdom to dial it back. Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. I'm in Texas. The next door neighbor is at least almost two miles away. So that's a wave kind of neighbor. It's not a neighbor that you see every day. Um, some neighbors can be close by and some can be far away. But be careful not to allow your, your, um, your showing of love to be abused. Thank you so much, sir. This is the last one. Very briefly, how do you choose your mentors? And how do you get them to accept you? I would really have loved to hear from all the speakers at least 30 seconds, 30 seconds or maximum 60 seconds from all the speakers. Ladies first, let's go. How do you choose your mentors and how do you get them to accept you? Sister Robini? Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, choosing our mentors and choosing the people that we work with, right? Um, I believe that all of us, we don't have the same mindset. So if, for, for example, now a businessman, if he's starting a business, he has to be very, uh, very uh, picky about who he's going to pick to, to be his business partner. Because number one, we have to know the intention of the person. He may drain our energy, he may drain the money we have. So we have to be very wise in picking. So in picking our business partner, in picking uh, someone that we are going to work with, a project or anything, we have to be, number one, we have to be wise in making that decision. It is better if we can do it on our own. We get the knowledge from outsource. We, we, we outsource the knowledge um, and uh, the financial, everything we can outs outsource them. But um, if you still need a partner, then make sure the partner has the same mindset of what uh, we are. Make sure the goal is the same. Make sure the, the focus is the same. Because may maybe for me now, I have this particular goal, but this person cannot be seen from that view because his angle will be different. His angle of seeing things will be different than how I am seeing it, right? And I cannot drag him to see it from my angle because his angle is his angle. So we have to be very picky. We have to be very wise. How are we going to do that? Make sure that we get enough counseling, enough sources, enough wisdom. And also, most importantly, we need the Holy Spirit in us yeah. to guide us. To, to always exactly. show us the direction. That is the ultimate yeah. thing that we need. So, yes. Yeah, so that because, is our, <laughs> because our perspectives are different, we need to give you the mm -hmm. guidance of the Holy Spirit to be able to care about this. Uh, Pastor Sunday, Olujumi? All right, sir. In, so, in, in 60 seconds, sir. Okay. How do you choose our mentors and how do you get them to accept us? Okay. Number one, I would say you prayerfully choose your mentor. Number two, I will tell you that, uh, like uh, Ruby, Ruby was trying to talk, Along that line, being a pastor now, I will not go for a medical doctor that is not in ministerial line to come and be my mentor. We must be in the same line. So it's the fellow that want to mentor you in the same line with you. So you follow. Then uh, you believe that this fellow have more into him to impact, to pass across to me. Worth of wisdom and knowledge should be inside that fellow that I know. I can gain from him. So based on that three points, maybe I would throw that one. Please, let me just chip in another 20 seconds with the question Pastor Leke was trying, was answering the other time. I have an idea of another thing. Maybe in an organization where you are showing love, somebody wants to take your love for granted. I think principle, there should be a very strong principle and firmness for anyone that you will lay down in an organization that anyone that wants to take it for granted we have himself to be to be blamed. So there's a place of love, there's a place of firmness and principle. That is where they begin to say some people is very there, some people are hard. I can be very hard on you and at the same time be good to you. When you want to abuse it, you will know that there's no room for you. 
So it depends on the structure, principle, and firmness of the leader or the leadership. So I think I've contributed on that. Thank you, sir. Pastor Chris. Um, in addition to everything that has been said, I suppose your, men your uh, mentor must be able to set your fire, um, must be able to inspire you, and, and because your mentor will probably be too very busy, so you will have limited time with them, so they must be able to inspire you. I mean, I suppose we preach the inspired word of God, so they have to be able to, um, after they've left you, you're still on fire and, and still inspired to do what you want to do. Thank you. Oh, Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris, a place of mentorship is not a comfort zone. So your mentor should, is meant to be able to set you on fire. Wow. Pastor Leke? <laughs> Once Pastor Chris has spoken, twice have I heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think uh, um, Pastor uh, Sonny also mentioned the same, uh, the same thing that I actually had in mind. Um, I would only pick a mentor that is good in what it is that I need to learn from or that I'm going after. So if I'm looking for someone that um, knows that I'm looking for someone that is good with finance when it comes to planning for family, um, that's what I would look out for. So when I started working as a personal assistant, my mentor from afar was the personal assistant for then President Obama. Uh, his name is Buddy Love. So I went to find that individual, which is in line with the same thing that my own principal is also close to, someone leading an organization that is really large, and then mimic his life and understudy that gentleman. But then one thing with mentorship is it is with time, okay? It, it, it has to be connected to time. And as you're learning up, you should be able to also learn down. Um, so as, uh, as the mentor is uh is teaching you then there must be something that you're also doing that is of usefulness or value uh to the mentor or else you're just juicing and juicing the individual without giving anything back mm, mm. um and it's only but it's only those beings that receive and receive and never give back hey, all right <laughs> <laughs> wow thank god this event is recorded please go back go to the facebook page Go on the YouTube page, it's going to be uploaded there. You know, take it again, pause it, ponder on all, each of these words that has been, been dropped here. And our lives will not remain the same in Jesus' name. I wish we could have more time, but I can't say more than this. We've been extremely blessed and we are opportuned to be here. We celebrate every one of you today. Thank you so much for blessing us. Ladies and gentlemen, please flood the chat with some claps, emojis, and some hearts. And before we just uh, let the speakers go, uh, we have some uh, certificate for all of you. We are going to, yes, we have some electronic certificate for you. That is what we do here in Asia when we host a program like this. We'll tell you that we appreciate you. We don't want you to forget so easily. So we send you that uh, e-certificate for you. If you want to print it and put it in your, in, in, in your office or in your workstation, just do that so you can remember us. Few weeks ago, Pastor Leke clocked 40. Oh, wow. We haven't seen him since then. So we're just going to shout happy birthday in the chat section and then send him some, some Tada emojis. And then while we can sing happy birthday for Pastor Leke. One, two, ready, go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you, Lima. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you, thank you. Pastor, thank Pastor Leke has been a source of blessing, no doubt, to most of us. Not, you know, decades and decades. So we bless God for your life, sir. And we celebrate God. We pray that God will grant you more years and grant Amen. all the desires of our we have in Jesus' precious Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
our co-host. Thank you for all you've done for us today. Over to you, the moderators. Thank you so much, pastors and daddies in the house that God has used to pour into our life. I mean, it's been amazing learning from you all. We are, we are so blessed. Thank you so much for giving us the room to learn even as young people. I mean, it's a great privilege. So thank you so much. And we pray that God Almighty will fill you in with more wisdom, fill you in with more anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much. And next here, yeah, I know that we've all enjoyed. Please, if you know you enjoyed today, um, interactive section, you enjoyed today's teaching, please, I want you to, to um, use the emoji, like the wave thing. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. So next, we will be having our offering. It's time for offering. And uh, for our offering, you can see on the screen, we have um, different accounts for different people from different country. Um, anyone you're able to use, please use it wisely. Thank you all. So we invite the choir for um, offering. So while we wait for the media for the choir, um, you can see the, the offering accounts from, we have Korea, we have Indonesia, we have um, East Asia Bank, Okay, we have Philippines, we have Malaysia, and we also have um, from Nigeria that is under South Korea too. So, and we have um, DBBL too. <laughs> so if you can also use that, then you should. And another thing to add on to that is in the description for the payments of the offering, uh, you can see the instruction there on the screen. Please include Asia Yaya in your resident in your reference for the description of your offering given. God bless you as you do so. Amen. Amen. Please over to you, media, for the offering. And after that, we'll call on Pastor Erico to pray for our offering. Uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Duran? Pastor Duran, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Pastor Duran should be praying on the offering now. Uh, I will not be able to take some music right now. So after the prayer, then Pastor Stephen Oluwala will be coming in to uh, usher in uh, that is here for the Father's blessing. Over to you, Pastor Duran. In Jesus' name. Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord God, for making, Lord God, the RCCGI Asia seminar, Lord God, on leadership a success. We bless your name, Lord God, for the people, Lord God, that you have used, Lord God, from the inception to the completion. And now, Lord God, we also bless you and thank you for individuals, Lord God, who have contributed in one way or another, especially now, Lord God, that we, they have uh, given, a Lord God, out, Lord God, of the abundance that you have showered upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessings, O Lord God, that we, O Lord God, are now giving back, O Lord God, to you, O Lord God, through RCCG Yaya Asia, O Lord God. Father, for those, Lord God, who have given, O Lord God, keep on blessing them, O Lord God, and keep, O Lord God, on showing and telling the whole world, O Lord God, announcing to the whole world that indeed you are our father, indeed you are our daddy. And, O Lord God, as many, O Lord God, who are yet to give, O Lord God, as you put in their heart, O Lord God, the, the, the desire, O Lord God, and the uh, enablement, O Lord God, capability, O Lord God, to be of assistance, O Lord God, in your kingdom through this platform, O Lord God. Bless them, mighty O Lord God, as they open their hands, O Lord God, towards, O Lord God, the expansion of your kingdom, O Lord God, in this platform, O Lord God. Again, O Lord God, we thank you and we bless you, O Lord God, because indeed you are great, you are mighty, you are wonderful, o Lord God. To you all the glory, adoration, and thanksgiving, O Lord God. Bless everyone, o Lord God, that have given, O Lord God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Duran, for that prayer. May God bless you. I will now pass the stage to Pastor Biogun 
God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Please, can you give some clap, the um, emoji clap for the Lord Jesus? Just give it to the Lord Jesus. Come on, give it to the Lord. Let it flood the, sh the chat. This is awesome. This is a brilliant one. Thank you very much, all our, all our panelists. We thank you very much. Uh, Pastor Leke, thank you for sparing your time. I know how busy you have been all over throughout the week. Oh, God bless you, sir. We really appreciate you, Pastor Lujimi. God bless you. And uh, Pastor Chris, we really appreciate you. Sister Robini, that's an excellent one. God bless you. I have the privilege to also thank our uh, DCO. He was here with us yesterday and is with us as well today with, uh, with Mommy as well. And uh, please uh, do welcome with me our CO, Pastor uh, Remy Akin today. Please give it up for the Lord Jesus for this, our wonderful father in the house. Over to you, Daddy. God bless you, sir. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Solo uh, Alabu, for this great opportunity. I want you all to count yourself so lucky to pass through this great seminar. Don't let us ever take it for a joke. I may I drop this one first. We didn't have this type of opportunity while we are growing up. It will have been a different thing. I met a man, a senior pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We were talking some year, some, 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 some months ago. And he says, sir, you know something? There are some leaders that I miss while growing. This person I'm talking about is right away now. He's senior, he part, uh, already retired. And we are talking, he says, ah, you know what I missed? I miss people that can bring me up. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if there's anybody that will not appreciate the experience, is dead. Mm. How many books do you want to read before you exceed? Still, what we have learned within just two days. That's why I want to seriously plead that you please everything you have written in this uh, program, please let it be a reference point. I bet. And well, I want to really appreciate our parents in the Lord. I want, to, I want to give you a serious secret of what is happening in the redeemed Christian Church of God. Each time I remember or I think of Daddy G and Mommy G, I bow down for their sacrifices. Yes, sir. All these things you can't just get easily with a stomach full of food. All these ideas will come to you in your closet, not with food. You need to spend a lot of time with the Almighty God. What we are seeing in redeemed Christian Church of God, I'm telling you, is the result of the sacrifices of our parents in the Lord. And this I want us to please add to our values. How many times do you eat per day? You want God to use you. You want God to speak through you. There's no time I listen to that G.O. And I, 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 I find it difficult to be lifted. Are you talking of the exposition of the world? The in-depth the revelations? Yes, we said a lot about information here throughout this program. We need information, you need to be wise. But I want to drop something which I think will help you. There is something greater than information. It is true, information will make you to be wise when you apply them correctly. But there is something that is very great that will never miss the target 
is called revelation. You can't get revelation through man, it's from God. That's why this topic is very, very important. It's not just being a leader. If you are not connected with God, you can't lead well. Yes, there is something called experience, there's something called potentials, there's something called performance, but brethren, that does all this thing comes. It's from God through the Holy Spirit. At times that the G will be preaching and I will begin to wonder, where is this one coming from? I didn't know this one. And it's only will tell me, that tells you the number of hours your father is using with me. You want to be a good leader? Uh, I'm telling you the truth. You will have to miss your friends. You have to miss your relatives. It's only God that can make you a good leader. Let's learn from that. That's why I, I want to seriously appreciate daddy and mommy for leading this great church. And I want you to know that the reason is their closeness with Jehovah. So I appreciate even their prayers. Everything has been going well in this meeting and will end up well. Because that is praying for us every day. Whatever happens in your ministry, please don't ever think you have made it or see yourself as a local champion. You are just starting. The mistakes some users are making nowadays is immediately they see God. He'll head the through then they begin to raise their shoulders. You have not seen anything. You see, you have many things to collect from the master before you come into the open. Don't rush. Collect everything. This is my great advice to you. I met a young leader just coming up in the redeemed Christian Church of God. And the fellow was just trying to showcase himself. And I was looking at him because they speak to this one. He said, I have many things to collect from me. What have I given him that is possible? All about. And God just walked it out and met with him. And I said, young man, Please, can you give me a few minutes? He said, yes. I explained, I told him what God told me. God said, you still have to collect many things from him. What have you, what have you received from the Lord that you're already posting yourself here and there? Stay in the closet. Collect all before you come out. Then people will see the glory of God in your life. That's why I want to really appreciate Daddy and Mommy for the way they are teaching us, they are leading us. This is a great platform. If not from the Lord, nobody can operate like this. There was nothing like Yaya some years back. I want to please beg you, you have to lose sight of your friends, lose sight of whatever is taking your time and get, and get with the Almighty God to stop from him. I think what this uh, topic is telling us is go to Christ. Let him lead you before you begin to lead people. Let him speak to your life, speak through you before you begin to speak to people. What do you know? You can't know anything. The Bible says that word of God, that is Jesus Christ, started with the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis. You want to speak the word, which is Jesus, you need the Holy Spirit. You can't know Jesus except the Holy Spirit reveals to you. You can't know God, the Father, except Jesus Christ reveals the Father to you. You can't see the bottom line. That's the essence of this meeting. I want you to please check your relationship with Jehovah. How close are you with him? When like, did you receive instructions from him? Anyone that will lead, I tell you, we need Jesus. When you begin to take instructions from Jesus, you release all these instructions, everybody will buy for it. 
Let me give an example of Daddy G again. Please, I hope I'm not taking much of your time. We look back and consider the themes of our conventions, of our congresses. After each program, you see people outside the redeemed Christian Church of God using these themes, using this topic. Why? I to tell you that the topic came from Jehovah. The topic came from God, not from Daddy G, but from God. That's why each time I see, I look at Daddy G, I thank God for his life. How many general overseer will go and be with the Lord before saying a word? Brethren, anyone that will succeed as a leader must know how to bow before Jesus. Take note of that. We blind that out from Daddy G. He comes up, he needs time to pray. Why? Some people may, be, may not know the reason. The reason is anyone that will succeed, brethren, must know how to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't come with your brain. You don't come with what you have crammed. It won't work. But when you receive from him and you come, people will know that what you are saying is not of your own. Jesus Christ said, what I'm saying is not my own. I speak what I receive from Father. It's the essence of this meeting, please, I beg you. Don't say I'm taking much of your time. But I love you so much. I may not have the opportunity to have a, a, a talk with all of you as you are gathered together. Mind Jesus. Let's follow that G. That's why I will never stop appreciating that G and Mommy G, especially for their prayers and support. And also, I want to really appreciate the men of God, women of God used in this meeting. I want to certify that these are elements connected with Jehovah. I want to appreciate Pastor B.C. Akade. I listened to him. I jotted everything down. But then no leader can excel until you begin to allow criticism. Criticism is not to destroy you. No. It's okay to sit it and you sort it out. There are good ones. There are bad ones. Pick the good ones and go on with your job. I want to appreciate Pastor B.C. Akande, and I, I want to appreciate Pastor Leke Adeboye. He considered something very pertinent in leadership, especially when you are talking about God. He made a point, which I want you to please take note. He said, there's nobody that's wicked. All you need to do is to please study that fellow very well. And something just dropped into my heart. I say, this is true. Do you know that you can even lead Satan? All you need to do is just to discover who Satan is. The Bible says Satan is a father of lies. When he's speaking lies, you don't be moved. That is all that he has. So when you are working with anybody wicked, discover that fellow. Once you discover the wickedness, when he shows wickedness, you don't mind it. You know that is what he has. And move off with your own. Encourage him and move on. The later the Lord may touch you. And so I want to say I agree with you. That's not what you can. Just try, you start to study them. You know how to work it out. I want to appreciate Pastor Lunchini. That was fatherly. Oh, Pastor Chris. You did a good job. The Lord will support you them all. But I, I love I love your voice. And every other pastor sister will be near. You did well. We have really shared out of your well of experience. And the Lord will continue to increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. Moderators, you are fantastic. I could see confidence. 
in you. I could see confidence. That is what is needed. Some people preach their word with that boldness and they fail. It's one thing is to know the word, another thing is to deliver the word with the boldness of God. You may say, What is <laughs> this man saying? I'm telling you, I'm talking from my experience. Please don't mind me. I need to just speak out my mind because I want you to be another man after this uh, seminar. I was invited to a program. Please listen to me. It was a delivery service and I went there. Hopefully that God will use the person to deliver me in any form. I'm talking about many years back. I went to the, to the program. Oh, I had a bowl of ever and across soup. No fuller than not going to minister there. But even to call the man of God to please deliver me too. But you know what happened? When I got there, I sat among the congregation. The usher said, no way, you must leave. They said, no. I came here to be delivered. Please leave me. They said, no. When the arguments was going hard, I, I, I have to follow them. And I followed them to the altar. <laughs> I was sitting down thinking that these people, they don't know the person they are leading to the altar. A man full of a banner cross you. What will you do? Finally, I got there and uh, the man of God, if you see the man of God, <laughs> you can see him fast, you can read fasting on his forehead. So I sat down and I was listening to this man. I was listening to this man. All of a sudden, God spoke to me, says, sir, you will speak now. I said, myself, I must not. I'm not prepared for it. You know my secret. I've just eaten a bowl of a bag. Of course, he says, son, shut up. You are saying you will talk now. <laughs> he said the first time, second time, third time. I said, why? He said, look, that aspect my son is treating. I think it's about Isaiah chapter 49, 24 downwards. He said, my word that he's reading, he has no, no boldness to deliver it. He's just reading my word. The boldness to speak my word is not in him. And I expect this word is released by, the, by my boldness. Nothing will happen here. I said, but you know me. He said, look, just come up. Repeat what he said in boldness. I don't begin to see what, I have, what will happen. Brethren, I said, no, I cannot just say, give me a microphone. He, they will say, this man is too low. So said, too low, he's stopping him. I said, except you call me to the people, I can't do anything. You know what? Within a second, the man preaching just turned to me. He said, sir, it is you that will round up this summer. Then I knew that God was about to do something. I'm talking of confidence, boldness of God. A leader needs it. Before you can speak and things begin to happen, even while praying to be, for people. So I was brought up and uh, because he said, it, uh, I, he demanded even face me. I said, sir, please God, take the microphone. I was forced to stand up. And I, stood, I repeated the same thing he said. Not any message at all. Not any message at all. See what happened. People started falling, screaming, Demons flying out. <laughs> I was just laughing. See what boldness did. Anytime you come up as a leader, please collect the confidence and the boldness from Jehovah. And when you begin to speak, people will even listen to you more than your expectation. I want to thank the moderators who've done a great job. And I want to thank all the participants. I love you all. I love these organizers. Pastor uh, Oluwalabu, may the Lord bless you. In fact, the Lord picked you to be sad go for the youth just because <laughs> you are still a youth. Why not he says, you want to remain a youth? Move like a youth. Talk like a youth. I pray that you will continue 
to give us these examples forevermore. I want to appreciate the organizers, youth leaders, such as Pastor Olu Alabu, congratulate all participants for being part of this great uh, meeting. Our world needs real leaders. Leadership is a mentality of assumed responsibility. Leadership is accountability. Leadership is the ability to command conscious fellowship. The best fellowship, leadership model is that of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all we have learned from this seminar. I pray that as you leave this meeting, the Lord will begin to work for you and through you. I want to say a big congratulations for all of you. And I want you to please take note of all what you have, you have taught. And please make good use of good use of them because the world is waiting. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. The world is waiting for your manifestation. That is why God has divinely organized this seminar for you. Don't let it end here, please. And the Lord will support you. It is time to use all that you have learned. God bless you seriously. Let us pray. Eternal rock of ages, what was it? Thank you. Thank you for appearance in the law. Thank you for the way you are using them. We pray that you please renew their strength in you. The courage to press forward. To take this church to the next level, please release upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you have used them to do in this church, which is which has formed our platform today. We cherish them, Lord. Renew your anointing. And please always give them journey messages. Help them to stay connected to the sea of facing glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the DCO of this great continent. Thank you for how you spoke through him yesterday. Thank you for all that we have learned. We pray that he will continue to be a well of wisdom unto us in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord, for Pastor Ogluwa Labu, whatever he may be looking unto you for Jehovah, because of this great work you are using him to do, please, that you might be more glorious in his life. Please, turn his needs to testimonies in the name of Jesus. For every speaker, oh Lord, every, for every speaker, I pray that you please lay your hands upon them and use them the more in the name of Jesus. Let them have more time to be with you more time to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for the participants. Lord, I pray that you give us the grace to be doers of the war in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Daddy. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you very, very much. And thank, we thank mommy as well for always being there, supporting you for the good yummy yummy that mommy is cooking for you, daddy. God bless, God bless you, mommy. I want to say thank you once again to my team, starting from uh, uh, Pastor James, uh, Pastor Duran, uh, Sister Yobami Ojeshino. God bless you and all the all my team members. We have, we have done excellently well. God bless you, everybody that have made this, um, uh, this seminar a success. Uh, please don't forget that we are not yet done. 
we are still our our next assignment is our uh our convention which is just um october the lord bless you as you just uh, put it in mind please go back to this um to this chat facebook and youtube and listen to the messages again and again it will surely bless your life over to you moderators we we salute you god bless you over to you all the pastors in the house all the senior pastors i celebrate you we did not take you you are the one that made it possible god bless you thank you for encouraging our youth in the house thank you very much sir. we celebrate you sir all the circles all the province pastors and the country coordinator i salute you god bless you over to you moderators Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much to daddy. Thank you for that blessing. And today was another great day. Um, we got like a full pack of it. We got the word of God. The yes, so. inside of us. Yes, yes. Yes, is that yes. also, I mean, is it half pack? Yes, <laughs> I mean, we have like your full pack, pack 12. <laughs> it's full pack. <laughs> full pack, full pack, full pack from every so, angle, from every perspective. Are you going to share with people? I mean, is it for us to just enjoy it to ourselves? I know. Are we later, to I'll, share it? later, I'll go back and watch this video and share the video again on YouTube. Yes, okay. it's actually for us to share because don't forget that the topic still remains Christ leadership lifestyle. So whatever package we got is not for us to just enjoy it ourselves. It's for us to also impose it, or not impose, but deposit it in the life of people. Go out there and yes. uh, let people know that this is God's will for your life. This is God's purpose and let people understand what it is to be a leader. Everyone is called to be a leader. Don't forget that we also learn that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we want to thank everyone, appreciate everyone from wherever you may be. Uh, God bless you for finding the time and taking the time to attend this program from yesterday until now. I see may God continue to reward you tremendously as we apply everything that we have learned in today's program, may you excel and be lifted. Amen. Amen. And don't also forget to get your own certificate, attendance certificate. Please go to the chat box and get the link and fill up so you can also acquire your own certificate because it's your right to have it. Yes. So thank you everyone for joining us and thank you for enjoying this section and for everything for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, now we are going to say surely together. Surely, God, God goodness, mercy, mercy will follow us. Follow you. But today, and we should and we the Lord. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Hello. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so Bye. much. This is awesome. God bless you, moderators. Thank you. Goody, goody. <laughs> ah, my God. God bless you, sir. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Bye. 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 So loving and so true, so powerful in all you do. You feel me, you see me, you know my every move. You love for me to sing to you.
so patient, so gracious, so merciful and true, so wonderful in all you do. You feel me. You see me. You know my every move. You love for me.